Welcome to My Computer Build Part 4. So this is the episode where we're finally going to turn this thing on. We do have some things to do first though. And one thing I want to address actually, this is something that I meant to look up yesterday but forgot to. Um, you might remember from the last part that I daisy-chained a bunch of these fans together and then connected them into single slots. So these two front fans and this back fan are connected to sys fan 1. And then these two bottom ones are connected to sys fan 2. So when you have multiple fans going into one header on the motherboard, there's a pretty obvious question, which is, is the header going to be able to supply enough power for all of the fans? Thankfully, the answer is yes. I couldn't actually find the exact amount of power that comes out of these pins in the motherboard manual. It doesn't seem to state it. But from a quick Google online, it seems like fan headers on motherboards typically provide one amp. And each of these fans uses 0.25 amps. So theoretically, you could hook up to four fans into one slot. And the most I have is three fans in one slot. We should be perfectly fine. It is time to finally deal with the monitor situation. So I have this 1440p monitor down here that I still have not opened. I have my two old monitors here. This is my oldest monitor that I currently still have right here. At some point I decided I wanted dual monitors and that's when I bought this newer one years later. So this one is a lot newer. This one has an LED backlight this one does not, so this one kind of has to warm up when you turn it on. Um, this thing also is just worse quality in general, in terms of color and stuff like that. It doesn't look as good, and also it is much, much thicker if you look at it. It's very thick compared to this newer one. I'm just gonna push this off the stack, since I really don't need three monitors and don't have room for it. I mean, where would I put it? I guess I could get a wall mount or something, but eh, I'm fine with two. So I'm going to pack this thing up, put it into a box. This main monitor is going to become my side monitor over here on the right. And this 1440p monitor is going to become my new main monitor up front. I think it says bezel-less, and it is basically bezel-less. There's almost no border at all, which is very different than all the monitors I've ever had. There we go. Sorry I didn't get it on a camera, but the thing is so awkward to hold, I just kind of installed it, uh, the bottom of it, in my lap. But yeah, take a look at this thing. It is pretty dang thin. Especially the main part, bulges out a bit here. Here's the tilt in action, by the way. I'll get ready for it. How far can we go? That's it. That's like 10 or 15 degrees. Oh yeah, high-end stand. If you've ever wondered how I keep my cell phone charged since I'm recording everything on it, check out this bit of tech. I just bought this off of Amazon. Looking pretty good. Um, I think it's time to install the computer. Obviously, I still have a rat's nest of wires there. I am going to deal with that, but before I go too far into dealing with cleaning all of this up down there and routing the wires, I want to make sure the computer actually works, because if I'm going to have to be tearing it out and putting it in and tearing it out all the time and messing with stuff, then I don't want to go through all that effort only to have to undo it. So let's make sure the computer works first. It's the moment of truth. I've got the power connected in the back, although the power supply is not turned on. I've got the mouse and keyboard plugged in, and I have both monitors plugged in. And now let's press the power button for the first time. Please turn on, please turn on, please turn on. <gasps> okay, LEDs lit up. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, apparently the video card has, like, sort of an LED, just so you can see the name. Um, it seems to be pretty much the only light inside there's a couple lights there those are the easy debug lights hopefully the fact that some of those are on is not a problem i don't know i forgot to plug in the power for the main monitor which is why it wouldn't turn on there we go let's turn both on what are we going to see obviously we don't have any os on the hard drive but i hope we see something does it just take you straight to bios it takes us to no signal the monitor isn't getting a signal, neither of them, and I checked and made sure that I'm actually iterating through all the different signal types, making sure I'm set on display port. Still, no signal. Also, the mouse and keyboard are not getting any power from USB, so that's worrying. Obviously, it's on to some degree. The LED lights on the front of the case are on. The video card light thing is on. 
Okay, I'm gonna take a look at what's going on inside. The first thing that I suspect is probably that the ram is not completely seated down, because I had to use a lot of force and it was terrifying and I wasn't super sure that it was seated properly and even just eyeballing it, it looks like one might be slightly higher than the other. Okay, I reseated the ram and yeah, I'm almost certain that it wasn't seated properly because before it did not click on both sides. Now it did. You just have to press so hard that you think you're gonna break the motherboard. It's disturbing, but it should click on both sides. Here we go. Good, good. So now those debug lights, they went off. Little debug lights went off. That means it should, oh, one's on. I don't know if that's a bad thing. It might just be testing something. I don't know. Well, certainly an improvement. Um, are we getting a signal? We are, we have a signal. What is this? Okay, let's take a look, see if everything's okay. Uh, Ryzen 2700 8 core processor, yep, 2700X that is. Speed looks right. DRAM frequency 2133 megahertz? That doesn't seem right, but that will probably change, I think. 16 gigabytes of memory. Mm -hmm. Does that say I have three keyboards connected? That's odd. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna set up the your system. F1. Yes, BIOS! Beautiful! I love UEFI BIOS. Remember the old type of BIOS? I don't even remember what those were called, but you couldn't even use a mouse. You had to use keyboard everything, it just sucked. Um, there's not too much I want to do in here, I just want to make sure things look okay before I start wiring everything. So yeah, this DRAM frequency should be 3000 megahertz. That's the speed of the memory. Um, I'm not sure if I have to manually set that, or perhaps I just need to update the BIOS possibly for the motherboard, because perhaps they've only added the profile for the memory that I have installed in a newer version of the BIOS. I did make sure, by the way, that the memory that I installed, the Corsair Vengeance, is on the compatibility list for the motherboard, because in case you didn't know, each motherboard will have a list of compatibility where the manufacturers have tested various different types of memory on the motherboard, so it will confirm whether the type of memory you want to buy is actually compatible with it. I don't think that has so much to do with whether the memory will work. I'm pretty sure basically any memory will function, but if the memory that you get is not on a compatibility list, I believe that means that the manufacturers haven't created a specific overclocking profile for it. Apparently basically all memory is overclocked, even going just to 3000, that is an overclock. Looks like it's detected on the M2, we got the one terabyte. Samsung SSD 86. Yeah, seems to all be good. All right, I think it's time to deal with the cable situation and then get the computer set up permanently in a good place where everything's nice and sorted. Cable management is complete, I think. It doesn't look quite as neat as I'd like it to. From here, it kind of looks like a rat's nest again, but I swear it isn't. Also, cable management is really hard. It's very difficult. There's just a lot of cables here to deal with. But it'll probably look better from this angle. So, here's what I've done. All the stuff coming up here, we've got the uh, router, router over here, modem here, and then the external USB hard drive here. So all that stuff is coming down. Some of it is going here and into the computer. And I've got, uh, I used some of these Velcro ties to put around the desk and then kind of put cords through it. So it's kind of angered there. Also do that in a couple other areas. So this splits between the back of the computer and plugging into power. Ends up looking a little bit messy. All the stuff from up here, keyboard, mouse, monitors, etc., follows the desk a bit, so it's not just a bunch of loose hanging wires. Comes down, some of it goes to the computer, some of it goes down here to connect into power. I also took out a lot of the slack that's in all these things, like both of these power strips had a lot of slack, so that's all bundled up here. Yeah, it still looks like a rat's nest a bit, but it is a lot better. It is way better to manage. Um, I also vacuumed back here and cleaned the power strips. So it was all pretty dusty. Pretty much all the connections coming into the back of the computer come in pretty straight. I made sure that none of the slack was 
right here in the back of the computer, so that looks a lot nicer. I think it's time to start installing Windows. This will also be my first test of the front USB 3.0 ports. Let's see if they work. Oh, right. It's broken! No, I just need to do this. For whatever reason, it seems to think this HDMI connected monitor is my first monitor. I can change that once I get into Windows, but I don't think there's any way of changing that right now. Other than, I guess, just unplugging it, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, I didn't have to specifically boot into the USB drive or anything like that by going into the BIOS. It looks like it just detected, just said, hey, that's the only thing I could possibly boot into, so let's do it. So, not surprisingly, with no drivers installed, I can't access the internet. Although, ironically, I can't access the internet to download the drivers to access the internet. Of course, there's the CD that comes with the motherboard, but I don't have a CD drive. Luckily, I have a laptop. So I downloaded the drivers, transferred them to my USB drive. Still says I'm not connected to anything. Um, let me try restarting after installing the drivers. So it seems like the issue was actually the cable, the ethernet cable that I was using between the router and the computer. I don't know what's up with the cable. It's not really like broken, but it's a little bit funky. Normally an ethernet cable makes a very satisfying click noise when it goes into the socket. This one does not. You just kind of jam it in there and it doesn't really click. So this blue cable is what used to be going between the router and my computer, but I switched it. So now the yellow one goes down to my computer and between my router and my modem, it's got the blue one. Seems to work now. I tried reconnecting the blue one multiple times to my computer just, just to see if it wasn't seating very well and I maybe just needed to put it in very hard, but that didn't seem to do it. Put the yellow one in, it snapped in just fine. Put the blue one into these and I had to push it in very hard and it didn't make a good click, but it works. Yeah, if you look there at the build date, the current BIOS is this gray one here, new BIOS down here, you can see it's quite a bit newer by about three months. A little bit less than three months. And again, this is a very recent board, so that's actually pretty significant. I'm hoping it actually comes back to life. <laughs> Nothing went wrong. And I'm also hoping the RAM speed is about 3000 megahertz. Hmm. Well, that's not promising. It's still the same speed, so maybe I do have to manually do it. Oh yeah, it looks like I do have to do it. Uh, these XMP profiles, I believe these are the overclocking profiles for the memory. You can see one of them is 2800 and the other is 2933, just a little bit shy of 3000 megahertz. I call them overclocking. Technically they're overclocking, but it seems like one of those things where memory, although most manufacturers don't want to officially say that they support, say, 3000 megahertz, the highest official non-overclocking support is, I guess it's 2133 probably. It's something in the low 2000s like it is now. But if in reality, basically every single piece of memory can be overclocked from low 2000s to, well, depends on the memory stick, but much, much, much higher, then it's like not really overclocking. That's just kind of how it's expected to be, you know? We're not talking about overclocking a GPU by 5% of its clock rate or something. This is a massive improvement. Anyway, so Profile 2 is the fastest one. So I think that's what this is? A XMP? Probably Auto XMP Profile? This is selecting the profile that turns it on, I think. Profile two on. Okay. Um, I guess I probably have to restart my computer, huh? Uh-huh. Yep, restarted. There we go. Now it's 2933. That is a huge improvement. <laughs> so Windows 10 comes with Microsoft Edge and I typed in Chrome because I want to download Chrome and get rid of this horrible thing. Actually, I don't know if I can even get rid of it, but I'm going to stop using it at least. When you type Chrome in a Microsoft Edge, it says promoted by Microsoft. Microsoft Edge is the faster, safer browser on Windows 10, and it is already installed on your PC. And it's got like some features there. Browse faster, longer, built in protection, built in assistance with Cortana. I've already disabled Cortana, along with a bunch of other garbage ad data collection stuff. So it basically begs you not to switch browsers. That is <laughs> it's sort of funny, but also sort of just pathetic. I am so happy with this new monitor. I'm so glad that not only I went for 1440p, but also that I went for IPS. An IPS panel is so much better than my other TN panels. Now that I've used this thing for like a couple hours, my old monitor 
I realize just how absolutely terrible this thing is. Now that I've seen the light, I can't go back. I've just been used to this thing, but it's horrible. So colors and contrast and all that stuff on this new monitor actually look good. I've realized that this monitor is completely incapable of displaying anything that even looks vaguely white or black. It's just ugly. Check out viewing angle. So this is from, well, that website down there at the bottom. They have a bunch of monitor like calibration testing sort of stuff. And this one specifically is for viewing angle. So this is the main monitor, the IPS one, which has a very good viewing angle. That basically means that colors don't change very much when you look at the monitor from a angle other than directly head on. Notice it's a even color throughout. And if I move up, it doesn't really change much. Look at it from down below. Look at it from the side. Stays the same. Notice some difference on this one. This is the TN monitor. Even straight on, it you can still see some of the bad viewing angle at the edges. The fringes look a bit messed up. And if you go down and up, I mean, look, the color like sort of looks like it inverts, gets all fucked up. It's terrible. There, look at that. The one on the left is actually white. The one on the right is, I don't even know what that color is. What is that? Fast forward, oh, I don't know, three hours or something. And I am pretty much mostly done setting up the computer. Installed all the drivers, installed tons of programs, the whole Adobe suite of stuff that I use for editing, OBS, Media Player Classic Home Cinema, Discord, and KeyPass, and 7-Zip, and etc, etc. Just all the tools that I need. I'm also in the process of downloading a couple games, each of which are about 40 gigabytes, so that takes a good couple hours to download. <laughs> Figured I would just do that while I'm doing other stuff. I've updated Windows. Um, I've activated Windows. That's one of the big reasons it took so long, actually. Activating Windows was a whole ordeal. I kind of forgot to get my product key off of my old computer before I, you know, took it apart. I didn't really think about it, to be honest. I got into this installation of Windows and said, hey, you haven't activated it. And I thought, oh yeah, I should activate it. Wait, how do I activate it? So there's too many ways to activate your computer. It basically boils down to either you have the product key and enter it, which I didn't. Um, technically, if I really, really wanted to, I could probably extract the product key from like the registry in the old hard drive or just put the hard drive back in and take the power supply to my new computer, put it in the old one and just boot up the whole computer. I could also do that. Didn't want to do that. So without the product key, pretty much left with having to link your product key to your Microsoft account because I log into not a local user on this computer, but instead an actual Microsoft account that connects online and therefore all your stuff kind of carries across to multiple installations, as long as you log into the same account. Unfortunately, apparently I had not done that. I guess that's something you actively have to do, but I guess my product key was never associated with my account. So logging in to my Windows account did absolutely nothing. Anyway, fast forward some more time. I dealt with it through mysterious means. No, I didn't pirate it or something. I don't, can you even pirate Windows? I imagine that'd be a pain in the ass. Anyway, it's all good to go now. I have not played any games yet, but so far everything has worked perfectly. I think this is a pretty good place to end part four of my building a computer series. So I hope you've enjoyed and in part five, I'm going to actually start to use this computer, meaning I'm going to test out recording. I'm going to see what game performance is like. I want to tweak the fans and see how my cooling situation is in relation to all the fans, whether the bottom ones are on or not on or what speed they need to be and what kind of thermal performance I'm getting from my massive GPU and my CPU. So lots of testing and experimenting and messing around with this computer and actually using it. 